Tehran's Azadi Stadium, Iran's sporting showcase. Built for the Asian Games in 1974, all major competitions are held here. The national women's canoe polo team train here. The sport demands a lot of strength. That's just one of the attractions for the coach. A former swimmer, basketball player and gymnastics teacher, she has made a name for herself in this sport. I started in Isfahan. I watched the men train and I started to train myself. In the beginning, I was all by myself. I forced myself to try it because I knew that physically I could do it. Then I wanted to practice it with other women. These young women are the seventh best in the world. The men are the twelfth. That's a real source of pride for the women and helps the team draw new talent from all over the country. But the real motivation comes from a sense of freedom. A lot of women play indoor sports like volleyball, but they are confined indoors and they don't make any progress. We've chosen a sport played outdoors in the fresh air. People come and watch us. That encourages and motivates us to do better. Women play fully covered up. There's no flouting around strict dress code here. It's a condition for playing in public and having their matches screened on television. And without television, there's no sponsors. The men who play don't face the same restriction, but they do sympathize. There might be more women who would take part in these sports if they didn't have to cover up so much. It's too hard in the heat and the long sleeves. Their performance would be better if they could wear short sleeves and they would enjoy the sport more. These dress codes mean most Iranian female athletes are excluded from major international sporting events, except the women's Islamic Games. Only one Iranian woman took part in the Olympic Games in Athens, and that was in archery. So, despite promising contenders, Iran's results on the field in no way reflect their potential at home.